All right, today we're looking at a walk-in freezer that's freezing up, and we got a coil here. It's all beat to heck. We're uh, testing out our clock, which can't tell for certain if it's moving yet. Also got a leak going on. We pumped it down, took it down to zero, maybe a pound or two above it. Rebrazed that suction line. Left it vented a little bit just to in case any pressure build up. Got that there. Right now we're just straightening out these fins, which is a good time. This is at a school, so the kids are around it quite a bit. We're just kind of going through patiently, trying to straighten these out as best as possible. Hasn't been done for ever. And that's the original compressor. I thought that was a replacement, but it's an 03 compressor. Looks like a uh, malfunction of a braze joint from the factory. I was able to suck it into the pockets of both the uh, elbow there. No leaks found on the pressure switch. I've got the clock, like I said, marked, and I believe it's tracking. Yep. Yeah, it's tracking. See the blue mark there. They had shut this off for me before I got here, but it's definitely low. So I'm thinking it's probably never heating, hitting uh, temperature. So we'll just run, 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 run. We're gonna wash this thing out once we get done. Probably go ahead and chemically clean it because it definitely is a is a mess. It's got the it's it's crammed down into those fins, and you can't see nothing when you look at it from the backside. Coming through this way here, you can't see squat. We'll go ahead and look at the inside here in a little bit. I just now had a chance to look closer at this defrost clock, but a little bit whopper gel there, and like he said, time was off. May not do you a whole lot of good, so we're gonna even those out. May actually take it to three instead of the two. They um, had uh, they had an evaporator, a uh, walk-in cooler before this, and that's gonna get a lot of the humidity out prior to any of the issues they got going on but probably gonna switch it to that and they got the timer set pretty high too i don't know if the defrost termination is working properly either but it sounds to me just basically accumulated and between that and the refrigerant being low kind of gotten some progress going on here with this you can kind of see that they're a little mangoided using the uh my robin airbrush i think it is it's got multiple different uh heads on it we're gonna run some chemical cleaner in it first and kind of see what we got going on. This is only like two layers thick. Uh, I'd rather have a gap than no gap. That way, at least got some air going through the copper. I did do a little something new to my breezing bag here. I ended up putting a washer in there and a rivet. So that allows me to zip that thing open and everything right there on the bag. There you go. So it's not bad. I don't have the fancy uh, Viper stuff. All I've got is New Bright. Got the yellow there for my evaporators. Got big blue. Well, not even got big blue. We're all new Calgon here. comes in, goes across, and goes over to there. Got a little one here. This one here is... Cold! Definitely cold. It's crammed. Coils were clean, I checked those earlier. We've got super heat issues here. At 26, 27 degrees. Let's see if this comes out to be in. Gotta remember, anything below 32 is gonna freeze. I think this TXV's got issues. Run 404, around 28 degrees, we're at negative 18. So interesting we're getting a better look here at this so we're running 28 degree you want a minimum of 20 back at the compressor according to copeland 
we've got a negative 20 evaporator temperature, 8 degrees suction line temperature. It's 70 degrees or better inside, so it's going to sit there and freeze up. So, you know, the insulation is too thin. I went ahead and put it into defrost. I'm sitting there looking at the defrost heater. It's sticking out of the side there for some reason. <clears throat> really ain't got nothing growing on the evaporator, but we definitely got something going on here at this TXV area. I've not gotten good explanation of what the whole problem was since the beginning, so what we fixed so far has needed to be done, but wasn't the initial reason. Honestly, most of the reason of what's going on is whoever installed this used too thin of insulation. How this is just now starting to become an issue. This has been installed since 2003. Um, you know, it's like, come on, how'd this just start? You really don't know what to think when you don't get good information. Finally got it melted out there with water. There's a port there, so I should be able to check superheat. So we made some adjustments to the superheat for this freezer. It was running way up there in the high 20s, almost 30s area. Right now, as you see, we're running 7.2. It's fluctuating down to mid sixes, back up to nine. Our box temperature, now the head pressure obviously is not hooked up. We're running right around 11, which we've been keeping the door open, so we got her all adjusted. Got my suction port there, got my uh, suction line over there, so just a foot away. And it's a little bit better being right on the coil. Uh, we took that defrost out. We're uh, just gonna have the two spaced out every 12 hours. You can see it's feeding a lot better than what it was. We got all that out. There was a little piece in that fan motor there. We got that fixed. It's looking a lot better. So we're running at 31 degrees superheat. We're not frosting up like we were earlier. In theory, I mean, it was starving it. But yeah, we're just check our sight glass, make sure we're still full. We are. Sometimes that'll change on you after you get the uh, charge set. Now it's letting more through the coil. We've got our clock back to every 12 hours. We'll go ahead and get that set for 2.30. We'll go ahead and it'll go into a defrost, which will make up for us having that door open so much. We'll do that here shortly. We have about 32 minutes area. I think that's gonna be fine. She's satisfied and she's ready to go. The timer's set up. Coil looks a lot better than what it did. You can actually see some stuff getting through it. We've got the superheat set correctly. We were good out here on the superheat because like I said, you're supposed to maintain that uh, minimum of 20 according to Copeland. The line's not running as cold. We're, we're maybe going to fix his issue. Uh, it's not, you know, still ain't the right insulation. And I told him, save your money. Uh, check it out. Make sure that it's uh, freezing up still. And if it, uh, if it does, fine. We'll have the insulators come out and do it. Otherwise, Everything's a lot better than what it was. We got the superheat set. We got the leak fixed on the suction line. We got the coil cleaned. The coil straightened, and uh, everything's working pretty good. And we got that ice off the end of the coils. All right, so we got us a walk-in cooler here. It's starting to freeze a little bit there. You can see it a little bit there, but it's really bad over here and over here on this side. I mean, it's definitely not good. So I don't know if it's just low on charge, if it's a defrost issue. It's kind of weird that only one side did it. Okay, this old beast here. Let's see what's going on with the old Larkin. Looks like glass either full or it's empty, one or the other. We got it open. I went ahead and marked the clock. I figured it was maybe bad. It's getting ready to go into a defrost. Uh, looks like they got a 20 minute one. These are heated uh, coil defrost because they are beer cooler. So we're gonna go ahead. That turns really hard, but it's turning. Yeah, that was a lot harder than it probably should have been. Just let it pump down. I, they got an interlock right here. You new guys, interlock, basically they got a uh, circuit that's not quite capable of handling everything at one time. So what they'll do is they'll wait till this contactor for the compressor shuts off. Once it does, it'll allow the power to loop up into the contactor that powers the electric strips. When you're doing your maintenance, I like to write down the amperages that I have when it's working right. That way, like today, we'll check it and we'll see whether or not it's the same. If you lose an element, obviously it's gonna be a lot lower. Let's see if this thing pumps down and shuts off here. Now, if it's not energized, it should be pumping down. 
notice sometimes, yeah, there you can see it just went down. So we do have a full sight glass. I had a, there we go. So that one dropped out, that one kicked in. Go ahead and check our amp draw here. First leg there, as we're looking at it, 15.1. We got 15.4 down there, going to the second leg. And we're at 30. 30.6 that's good and then going to the last leg right around 19.8 we had 28.1 that would have been done with my other meter so all the heaters seem to be working see how that works out kind of nice Just for giggles checking the other ones here just to see if anything's different our termination's kicking out maybe what's happening now that uh, we're in the summer months may take that up to 30 minutes now that the humidity is getting higher, the uh, cooler is getting left open longer. I can't remember if I changed that. I don't think I did, but that seems awful short. Yeah, we're going to leave it a little high just because we need to get it to melt anyhow. Coils could be a little dirty too. It could be an airflow issue. For both of them, we both do it at the same time. It makes me think it's going to be a defrost issue. Looking through here into the condenser. We'll make sure our coil is clean, which I can see some light. Yeah, right there, some right there, bottom left corner. There's some, there's some, there's some. So I, I've washed, 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 washed these out really good in the past. This one here is just riddled, not doing so great. Let me wash, wash that thing out. So not even a couple minutes, and it just kicked out. Okay. Pressure switch must have uh, came on. Thought we were going to get somewhere, unless it's going to rapid cycle back and forth like that. We need to see where our, our pressure's at. Maybe rising up. Maybe we're leaking through the valve. Hard to say. It looks like we're holding right in there at about seven pounds area, which is fine. This is R22, like I said. He's very, very quiet. He's sleeping. He's sleeping right now. It's starting to melt. You can hear it ticking. I probably. Eh, can't quite scrape it off right now, but the one side looks really nice. May have to get the old sprayer out. I want to get some hot water off the water heater here. And it's not been drained forever. And it's not wanting to come out now. So this is great. So that means it's plugged full of crud. And it'll probably drip now non-stop, which is wonderful. No good deed goes unpunished, my friends. And it stopped. Got our handy dandy pump sprayer, and so far I've gotten the top loose. And we're just kind of working our way through. And once I get that broke off, I'm kind of going to work my way down into the coil. The uh, inside coils definitely got crud in there, so you can't just go by some of it. The heater's working pretty good. I'm just trying to speed it up. I've got three grocery stores that have called in, and it looks like I might get out a couple of them because it's just false alarm type stuff, but. I can't spend a whole lot of time here just because you don't know, and they're all in opposite directions. I'm trying to speed this up as much as possible. That defrost heater is going to definitely be set at least 35 minutes. I think that would probably do us good then. Um, I raised it while we were doing our thing here, and it's not kicked out yet, so it appears to me that you know we're definitely keeping our defrost termination switch engaged in the uh, heating process. So I don't think it's an issue with that. All right, so cut on out on me. I think the defrost limit was happy, so we're going to have to unhook X. And... Maybe it wasn't happy, just timed out. Before I end up forgetting, I think I'm going to set that down to 32. It's got termination. I'm not as worried about it. It's pumping down. on the low side but we can tweak that a little bit here in a little bit the uh it's staying engaged so we're gonna finish melting that out cleaning some of this muck crap off the freaking fan blades it's kind of ridiculous so um we've got ice still on the inside in there so we've just about got most of it out i've melted some of that there you can see a little bit of dirt it's not horrid we've already gotten the outside edge corners here the heaters are still kicking 
just basically working our way around. Same thing over here. Uh, it's out in there, almost, almost completely gone. Longer defrost, I think, is going to be all we need. Good progress so far. We're running about a 24 degree of app. We got full solid sight glass. Coil's not too bad. Today is Saturday. This is an overtime call. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. We can always catch it on another trip. Clock seems to be tracking. Uh, there's a possibility that it might be malfunctioning, but it kicked out. Sometimes it's harder to get into defrost than it is to get out of it. I wanted to make sure that it was 250 volts. We got 120. This is a neutral going over to our line over there. So this has a dedicated neutral. The clock, 240 volt. This one of those weird oddities where they have a neutral wire ran out here. For giggles, kick it out, recheck it, just to make certain it ain't nothing weird. That we got some, some weirdness going on. Nope, still 120. That's uh, gonna screw up our timing up. I would say it's probably gonna make your timing go about twice as long. It'd be about every 12 hours. So we're gonna go ahead and get that changed. Put the 230 volt clock away. We'll get 120 volt on there. Everything else is looking pretty good. I know I've had problems with this thing in the past here. It's full and the coils, I don't believe, are too bad on it. Yeah, I washed this one out multiple directions, and chemical and the whole nine yards on that. And it uh, got it up and working fairly well. A lot of this equipment's just uh, really tired and uh, ready to go home to the uh, promised lands. That's going to wrap this one up, guys. We'll probably tag this on with another video, but if you guys enjoyed it and you want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.